Hello there. In this video today, we're, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through a situation that is real, or in other words, a real life situation, and uh, we're going to graph it and then answer some questions. Okay? So let's read this together. It says, a construction worker drops his wrench. Okay? Pretty dangerous, but uh, hopefully nobody gets hurt here. Um, H is the height above ground in meters, and T is the time in seconds after the wrench was dropped. Do you got that? Okay. Now it says the relation models this situation. The following relation models this situation. And here it shows you H is equal to negative 4.9 T squared plus 342. Right now these are just numbers. We're not sure where they came from. But what we do know is that h is the height, okay? Normally we would say y would go right there, and t is the time in seconds, okay? Is this a quadratic relation? It is. How do you know that? Because there's a squared right there. All right, so the first thing we want to do in this is we're going to um, use the graphing calculator to answer the questions that follow. All right, so we're going to use the graphing calculator. So I'm going to use my screen here, go on my screen and get my graphing calculator. Here it is. Remember that the first thing you should do is enter this equation on the graphing calculator. So what we're going to do is just uh, clear the graphing calculator. If you remember how to do that, it's second function plus sign 712. And that will reset the graphing calculator so that it says RAM cleared. All right, we want to enter this in, so push the Y equals button. and I hope you're doing this with me. You're welcome to do it with a real graphing calculator or to use the one that your computer has already. Push Y equals and let's type everything in. Uh, the negative, be careful, it's not the minus sign, it's a negative sign right where here, right where it is, right where my arrow is. Negative 4.9. Okay. Uh, instead of T, we're not going to put T, we're going to put the X. And here's the X as we've done before. X, here's the little squared, plus 342. All right. Now, if you were to push graph right now, before we were just able to push graph, there's a problem. It looks like there's a parabola. To me, it looks like it's either going up or down. As we can see over here, we know the graph is opening down, so it's probably going up and then coming around and coming down here, but not a very good view of this situation. So here's what you have to do you have to go over to the window button which is right here okay at the window button there's a bunch of options here it says x minimum well let me go back to the graph here x is along here right the minimum when we're talking about x remember t is really representing x here so if t is time are we interested in negative seconds we're not are we so the minimum x value that we want Usually when you have a question with time, you want x to start at zero because that's the beginning of the situation. So push window. Uh, x minimum, instead of negative 10, we want it to be zero. That's when this thing begins. Then push the down arrow. Now the maximum, that's how many seconds this wrench will fall. We don't really know how long a wrench will fall, so it's up to you. You can put like Personally, I don't think any wrench could fall 10 seconds, but I'm just going to leave 10 there because uh, it's better to have a little bit too much than too little. So then what we do is we go down to the Y minimum, and let's go back to the graph here. The Y minimum is going to be talking about the height, okay? So the height, as you can see here, this height right now is only going up to 10, and it's going down to negative 10. Here, let's go back to the window so you can see that. See how it says y minimum negative 10? That is way too, that's way too low. We're interested, I mean, nothing, nothing can go below the ground. So let's say that the y minimum is the ground. Let's make that zero, okay? And the y maximum, we, ha we definitely have to change this. This graph, as you can see, this parabola is still way, way up on top here. So the y maximum, you might you might be able to have a good look over here and say the maximum that this thing goes, like when time is zero, so if, if time is zero, zero times zero is just zero, and zero times whatever number is just zero, so the maximum that this wrench is going to be is 342 meters. 
That's our maximum. So I'll go over to the window and say, okay, the y maximum, it's got to be bigger than 10. Let's make it 300 and, let's say 350. 342, 350, you know, you just want to make sure everything is included on this graph. Okay, let's push graph now, and I think we're going to see exactly what we want. There's the wrench at the top. It's being dropped, and it is falling, okay? The reason why it looks like it's falling this way is because this is time right here. Time is ticking away in the seconds. And up on the side here is how high it is, okay? How high the wrench is. So at 342 meters, it falls. We'll figure out how many seconds it takes. I know you're probably asking, how many seconds does it take to fall down there? I mean, you could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in a bit. But let's go back to that later. Let's answer the questions that the textbook would ask us. Okay, so here's the first question. It says, graph the relation, describe the shape, position, and orientation of the graph. Well, we didn't graph it by hand. We used the graphing calculator, and here's our graph. So that's good enough in this situation, okay? Well, it says, describe the shape. Well, the graph is a parabola. It's opening downwards. And the vertex is 0, 342. Let's go see if that's true. Is it really 0, 342? Well, when x is 0, y is 342. Let's see if that's true. Push the trace button on your calculator. And when you push trace, if you enter any number you want down here, it's going to appear for x. So if I put x is uh, 4, see how that appears there? Then hit enter. It tells you how high that wrench is. It's pretty cool, hey? If I say x is 3, it's 297.9 meters high. We're interested when x is 0. So let's just type in 0, enter. And it's hard to see the cursor up there, but really, when x is 0, we've got y being 342 meters high. So definitely, that's the answer for this question, for the vertex. The vertex is at 0, 342. OK? All right. So the next question. How far above the ground was the wrench when it was dropped? Well, we've already answered that, right? We know that it was 342 meters high. Now there's a word for this situation, and it's called the y-intercept of the graph. Okay, So this spot right here, where a graph, or where an equation, or a line, or where that crosses, the y-axis right here, is called the y-intercept. And whenever something crosses the y-intercept, x is always going to be the same thing. It's going to be when x is 0. Remember that? When x is 0, we're right on the y-axis here. And when x is 0, y was 342. So that is the y-intercept. OK? There it is. You can read it again on the video in case you forgot that. This can be like your note, OK? Next question. How far was the wrench? How far has it fallen after five seconds? Well, again, the graphing calculator is beautiful here. Let's just type five seconds in, x is five, hit enter, and there we go. It says, well, there's the intercom, but anyway, x is five, y is 219.5. That's how high the wrench is after five seconds. Now be careful, the question didn't say how high is the wrench after five seconds, it says how far has it fallen? So really what we want to do here is take 342 minus how far down it is right now, which is right about here, which is 219.5. Okay. Don't mind the background noise. Okay. Um, let's see what I'm showing you here. I was trying to show you the answer from the graphing calculator. What you're going to do to find how far it has fallen, right, is you take 342 minus 219.5, and this is what you should get. 342 minus 219.5 is 122.5 meters. Okay? Now, if you didn't have a graphing calculator and you wanted to do the same question, but without a graphing calculator, all you would have to do is put the 5, or the x is 5, into the equation. Remember this equation right over here at the very beginning? You put the 5 right there where the t is. 
And if you do that, let's go back here. If you put the five right there and you solve it, you're gonna you're gonna end up getting two hundred and nineteen point five, which is exactly what we had in our graphing calculator too. Okay. Um, how would you solve this? I'll just say it verbally how you would solve it. Um, remember bra Remember bed mass? So you'd go 5 times 5 is 25. And then you would go 25 times negative 4.9. And then you would add 32. Or sorry, 342. And you would get this answer right here. And then you do the same thing we said before. How far has it fallen? Well, take the top height minus where it is right now, 219.5, and you end up getting the same answer. So there's two ways to actually get this answer. Graphing calculator was definitely the easiest way because it was so quick and easy. But if you want to do it algebraically, which means throwing in a number into the equation, that totally works as well. I can guess what you like doing better, but anyway. So it says, how far has the wrench fallen after 10 seconds? Well, we already figured out 5 seconds. But let's type in 10 now. Look at that. Look at the answer we got. Negative 148. That's way down below. That's way down below here. That answer does not make sense because it's going to hit the ground and bounce, if anything, right? So in real life, this answer makes no sense whatsoever. Okay? How can you interpret the answer realistically? Well, we can say that this graph does not make any sense. So using one of the methods from the other page, remember, I told you there's two ways to do it before. You could put a 10 right here. And you, you could get that same answer of negative 148. But either way, no matter which way you do it, graphing calculator or algebraically, you're going to get an answer that doesn't make any sense, a negative answer for the height. That's impossible. So this is an impossible, it's, I guess it's not an impossible question, but it's an impossible question to answer realistically. It's impossible. OK. I think this is the last question. Um, when will the wrench hit the ground? Okay, this was the very first question that you were probably wondering. When is this wrench going to fall and hit the ground? How many seconds is it going to be? Well, you can start typing it in. You could say, how about uh, six seconds? It's still up there. How about, uh, let's skip one. Let's say eight seconds. We're getting really close here. It's got to be a little bit more than 28. Now, if I hit nine, I'm below. Look at negative 54.9. That makes no sense as well. So you can start hitting the arrows here, and I think that will help us. Let's see. Negative. We're getting a little closer here. Notice this is about as close as I can get. If I, if I get 8.4, I get negative 4 here. It's a little bit too low. And if I hit 8.3, I get 4.6. So it's going to be an answer really close to 8.3 or... 8.4. So the answer is somewhere in between those two, okay? So it's probably 8.3 something. All right? So you could say that as an answer on a test, and you would get a great mark because you'd be really, really close to the right answer. But if you want to get the exact answer, um, by the way, <laughs> I forgot to mention, this, when you, have a, when you have the graph crossing through the x-axis down here, when this line crosses through the x-axis, guess what it's called? It's not the y-intercept, it's called the x-intercept, okay? So the ground is in when y equals 0. y, or the height, is 0 right here, right? So that's called the x-intercept. You could just push trace on your cal graphing calculator and get as close as possible to y. That's what we just did. We got 8.3 something, right? Or you could put 0 into the equation right here. Notice how y is 0 and then solve for x. How would you solve for x? Well, you would write it all in and then start by getting rid of the 342, subtract 342 from both sides, and here we are. The next step is to get rid of the negative 4.9 in front of the x squared, so you divide both sides by a negative 4.9. You end up getting 69.8 is equal to x squared, and the way to get rid of that little square there is to take the square root of both sides. Okay, so the square root of this, and let's see if we get an answer that's similar to what we just guessed. Remember we said 8.3 something? Well, 8.4, I think the answer, the exact answer of 69.8, let's see here. I don't want that. If you want the exact answer, the 
the square root, and this is the last thing I'm going to put on here, folks. We're, we're done. This video is basically done. The square root of 69.8 is 8.35. And I just rounded it to 8.4 here, I guess. Okay? So it takes 8.4 seconds for the wrench to hit the ground. That's a long time. That is serious. Like that, that dude that dropped the wrench is really high. Hmm. I should put a picture on this uh, web page of someone really high off the ground. One second. I'll go look for one. Okay, for your viewing pleasure, I have found some pictures, I'm pretty pleased to say. And uh, the first one is famous. It's the construction workers sitting on top of this building. And I think this was a real photo, folks. This is not just some photo where they photoshopped it and put, put people on here. This is an actual picture. And uh, yeah, the only thing changed about this picture is that they gave these guys uh, colorful, they put color on those guys. It's a black and white photo. It's very famous. All right? Maybe you've seen this before. But uh, I'd say if you dropped a wrench from that height, that would be pretty uh, pretty cool. It'd be dangerous as well. So I shouldn't say cool. It'd be very dangerous if a wrench dropped from there. Um, but maybe this guy, if he dropped his cigarette, that would be a little less dangerous. But uh, you shouldn't smoke anyway, right? That's I'm not trying to promote that here. Okay. This guy's, again, it's just a photo again. This one's probably more modern. It's crazy. Personally, I would have a hard time doing this. I think it would be a tough job. Um, and then there's this one here. It's uh, I'm not sure if that's real. It probably is. That's pretty cool. He's playing golf up there. And the last one here is... I think this one is real as well. And uh, I don't know, ever since those guys did that old black and white photo from way back when, it seems like uh, everybody wanted to do this. There's even a one with there's even a picture like this with a number of pregnant women that uh, do it as well. You can check it out on the internet. Uh, I don't know why a bunch of pregnant women decided to do that, but I guess it's been as you can see, all of these pictures were guys, so I suppose the women were definitely right to say, hey, let's just let's just do it ourselves too, because it's a cool it's a cool shot. I mean, yeah. So good enough, eh? This video is over. Hopefully you. Uh, had a little fun talking about a wrench.